If you work with Linux, Unix or Unix-like operating systems like macOS, you've probably heard about dot files or even interacted with them. If that isn't the case, then dot files explained shortly are configuration files that often start with a dot which makes them hidden files. The only caveat with them is, if you work across many PCs or just got a new one, it can be annoying to reconfigure them every single time. Don't even get me started on keeping them up to date. Fortunately, we can automate this process in a simple manner. So to get started, you need to have four things. Your dot fights, git, uh, git remote like github, GitLab, etc. You basically choose your poison. And of course, everything I just said on a Unix or Unix like operating system. In my case, I'll be using Linux today. Debian testing, by the way. In the end, it doesn't really matter what Linux distribution or Unix slash Unix like operating system you'll be using. Because the way I'm going to show you is Unix agnostic. Which in other terms means that this way works across different Unix and Unix-like operating systems without being tied to any specific operating system, one distribution or just one specific version. But the question still remains. What exactly do I mean by is the way the whole time? It is a script. But not only just a script, but the setup script that will almost work on all, if not all, Unix and Unix-like operating systems. And if you're questioning your existence on how it does work, the answer to this question is POSIX. If you don't know what POSIX is, then POSIX is a widely used standard that stands for Portable Operating System interface that enables compatibility between different operating systems. POSIX compliant operating systems include most Linux distributions, TinyCore and Alpine Linux being two exceptions because they are not 100% POSIX compliant by default, macOS, various BSDs, Android and other Unix operating systems such as Solaris. But now let's get to the practical side. Here we are now on my desktop as you can see. And as you can see I customized my shell which is ZSH, fastfetch and other things to fit my needs and suit my taste. In this case however I'm saying au revoir to my dot files. Please do not try this at home. Before we begin, you must know that there are several ways to reach the same goal and today I'll be showing one of them. First, you need to create a directory and copy or paste your current dot files into it. This can be in your home directory or for example in a special directory like I did with my GitHub folder. For the name of the folder, I would recommend you that you just call it dot files or lowercase. Of course, you can call it whatever you want or just dot, dot files, but I just simply chose dot files or lowercase in my dollar sign home slash github folder. But don't forget to adjust the path to your dot files depending on where you place them. Secondly, we need to create the script. So you either can use the touch command or use your favorite text editor, in my case, NeoVim. Once you've done that, we'll move on to scripting the script. At the beginning of every script, you need to specify a shebang so that your computer knows whether you just want to use a shell, python or something completely different. In our case, we'll be using slash bin slash sh. Underneath that, you can put your logo, your trademark or just a gigachat ASCII art. Because why shouldn't you? A shout out here on this note. For an ASCII art or your name in ASCII, you can just use his website and generate your name in ASCII and stylize your scripts and dot files. 
And if you don't want your name and want to use something different, like a real ASCII art, like the GigaChat one, just search the internet. There are many different versions, many different iterations and many different sites where you can get them from. I'm just speaking here from experience because I already have a GigaChat ASCII art in one of my scripts. Hey Bob, do you know the superior version of free and open source software? Uh, nope. What is it? It's called GigaChat software. Oh, really? Next, we'll get to the scripting itself. In my script, I'm mainly using shell functions so that the script is easier to understand and also looks clean to some degree. As of today, I'm only using five shell functions in total. The first one being for installing programs and dependencies. But this, as I said in the intro, in a Unix agnostic way. First, we have to define the function ourselves using simple Unix commands for our purposes, such as which so that we can install the right packages depending on the package manager because although Linux and Unix are mostly nicely standardized there are cases in the case of package managers that the packages or programs are called differently across package managers in the sense of that for example GNOME's PolKit or PolicyKit is called PolKit minus GNOME on one package manager but on the other it's called gnome minus polkit fortunately in my case that isn't the case yet but if you have a lot of packages to install or just want to automate your tiling window manager se setup script later on as an example it's something that you should definitely keep in mind we will do that again for Pac-Man, DNF, Zipper, XBPS and Homebrew. Also, if you use any BSD, like for example FreeBSD, you are welcome to add this package manager too. And also leave a like and a sub while you do so. Or just create a pull request on my .fights repository with this package manager as a little help. For the second function, we are deleting existing dot fights if they exist. So you should make a backup if you didn't do it yet. We are just doing this because when dot fights already exist and they aren't symlinked yet or just a basic configuration or yours, you can't symlink them. So we need to remove them before we can make a symlink of our dot fights. The first function is for plugins. So in my case, I only have one plugin for ZSH, but if you have other plugins like for NeoVim, you can add it to this function. And the nice thing about this function in particular is because I'm not shipping the plugin itself with my dot files, I'm just curling it directly to a file on my system when executing the script. Basically, we are downloading directly the content off of github where the plugin is hosted and we are putting the contents into a file which i named as the first thing in quotes of course if you're putting your plugins or even your dot files in directories that that might not even exist on a freshly installed unix system or on some Linux distributions or Unix operating systems, just use the make directory command and create them to enable that, for example, with this, you can basically download the plugin directly into a file. If the directory doesn't exist, called can't create the file in the directory. And coming to the for function, basically symlinks make this whole script possible or make sense to script the script. Because thanks to symlinks, you can make the script work in a chill way and sleep well at night. Or more scientifically explained, you basically do make a soft link to your dot files where they should normally be placed from your directory that you created and you decided where you put them in. And yeah, if you edit your dot files directly in the dot files directory, that one that you just created, you're going to 
see a change also in the dot file you you change in where it's symlink to and also in the reverse where the symlink is the change will be will be done to the original file also like i said just before use the make directory commands if you have some dot files that are placed in directories that might not exist and lastly as the fifth function i'm calling that function just a finish function where i echo finished or succeeded and where i'm changing the default shell to zsh and yeah i know you can make this echo echo much much more powerful or much more useful because if you do it in a smart way in in a way that is like if you succeed you get a succeeded message or echo and if something failed like for example a directory didn't exist or some conflict is there the echo says script succeeded or script didn't succeed but for the time being even if errors are spilling i still echo setup completed with an exclamation mark and at the end you need to call every function again because you we just defined what each function does and to really execute them you need to call them so basically just write the name out of how you did call the functions and if you add a function or don't want a function to run you can basically just don't call it or easily hash it out and at the very end i also added a to-do list because my no no taking system is a little bit let's say experimental and so yeah if i want to work on my zsh config i can directly go into the zsh config and see what i wanted to do anyways so you can either add it or don't edit it's basically just a temporary way for me for taking notes and having a to-do list and lastly if you have finished it you have your script and your dot files in your directory you also need to push it to your git remote i chose git hub you can choose GitLab or even host use your self-hosted one like i said basically you choose your poison whatever if you are not an expert with git or can't use git like the basics just use github desktop for for the start and gradually start using the github or to be uh, more correct the git cli and you will get used to it but yeah call me noob i still use the github desktop app most of the times mainly because logging in to github or being logged into github from the cli to my account basically any account is was a little bit tricky for me just like i said call me noob call, call it skill issue i'll still i'll still be using the github cli either today or either tomorrow it's just a matter of time and me figuring out what the heck i'm doing and if you have done all of that you can finally make a test run or even implement it directly and if you have any problems or something doesn't execute right you can look in into my dot files like i said they are on my github and you can troubleshoot them but if you followed the tutorial correctly you should have a working setup script and i'm going to show you a masterpiece of software or of scripting to be exact more uh, precise Like you've ju just saw yeah i did script this damn fast and also i just uh, showcased it on my desktop but i also tested it on my macbook as you can see here and on other operating systems like OpenSUSE, but also other devices like the pc of my dad because my don't give your dad your dot fights but yeah that was it i hope you learned something new or something valuable valuable from this video if you want support from me while switching from windows to linux 
it's the first link in the description. Other than that, you can comment, like and subscribe. And for the time being, see you next time.